In the Puget Sound, there's an incredible amount of natural beauty. We are completely surrounded by it. But as we go through this time of very rapid change, there's a very real threat that we're gonna lose pieces that make this place so special. Pieces we may not be able to replace. You know, salmon is probably one of the biggest health indicators of what we've got for our region. People don't understand how much it defines the region until it's gone. If we lose agriculture here, what is left are unfortunately people that don't know what they lost. Maybe we take for granted when our frosted flakes come from Minnesota. We mean something. Our culture means something. Extinction isn't an option for our people, it is an option for our culture. Over the past hundred years, we've made choices that echo into today. The decisions to change how the river flows, to dam the water, to pave as much as we have. What we're seeing is an ecosystem on the precipice of collapse. This population has seen its numbers reduced dramatically. I think there was a sense historically that um, because Washington did not have very many people, that you could take and take from this ecosystem and it would always be there for you because that is how it was. Given the number of people that live in Puget Sound and the number of people that are going to be coming to Puget Sound, we really do have to do things differently. We absolutely have time but it is gonna require us to rethink and to look to each other in a different way. The next 100 years, we're not gonna get the same leeway. Water, water, I mean, water is, it is the lifeblood of Puget Sound, right? I mean, it's the joke of Puget Sound that it's always raining here, but it is, in fact, our, our raison d'etre, it, it is the thing that connects us. Water touches all of us. And because of that, we're gonna need all different kinds of people coming together to see a new future. People who have different needs, different histories. People who are unwilling to accept that they're too different to work together to make this place better. There's nothing like it. It's almost like a drug. Every moment away from work, you're figuring out how you're gonna get back out in the water and go fishing. My favorite's still king salmon. When you hook into a 30, 40, or 50 pound king, it's life changing. Those fish do what they want. You're on the other end and you're hanging on, but you're at their mercy. When you take people out for the first time and they've never done this before and you hook them into a really big fish, it changes them forever too. It's what we do and it's who we are and we don't want this to go away. It's no surprise that Chinook aren't doing well. 200 years ago, this estuary would have been wide open. Salmon wouldn't have to compete for space as they move through the estuary. There would have been space enough for every salmon that moved through here. With the constraints in the estuary today, they don't have the room they need. A lot of times that means the fish move through the system way faster than they normally would and this sends them into Puget Sound without being big enough to defend themselves and to live in the big world. That lack of estuary habitat is the main bottleneck to Chinook survival. Chinook really are a canary in the coal mine and when we see that Chinook aren't doing well, we know there are problems with their ecosystem. 
we're losing habitat faster than it's being rebuilt. I spent some time right here in my backyard, Snohomish River system, and I went out and I looked, and I started really looking at how the habitat's connected. And boy, did we break it. I mean, it's, it's so obvious once you look at it. We got a lot of things that really need to be cleared up and fixed. We're trying to change the way we do business in Washington. We've been fighting over the last fish for far too long and it hasn't worked. We used to fight with the tribes constantly. Finger pointing, blaming. We don't want to do that anymore. We want to bring our salmon runs back. Now we talk about how to fix things instead of how to get that last fish from each other. If we give the estuary room, it will build the habitat that's important to fish. Here in the Snohomish, we have a lot of open space around our estuaries, and there are opportunities to restore it. In a hundred years, no one will think this was a bad idea. We need to have the conversations with the tribes, with the agricultural community, with fisheries people. If we aren't working together, I don't think we're gonna get there. You know, it's really easy to demonize somebody if you don't get to know them. When you bring them in and set them at the table and they start to work together, that goes away. The reason I do all this is because I want my kids and my grandkids to be able to fish. There's nothing more enjoyable than that than to take off, go out on a boat, and go out there and go fishing. We don't want this to go away. We want to see it get better. Pray to the Spirit for the teachings, for the words, for the good heart. You know, you're going out on the water to feed your family. You're going out in the water to make the connection to your, your culture. And you're honoring that salmon. Respect them. That's what I did this morning before my feet hit the ground. I was saying my prayers. Be out here on the water, to me, is a huge connection to my ancestors. It's a connection to who I am. These beaches are what taught me about life. Everything has meaning here on the beach. Our ancestors, we know, are here in every wave that rushes up on the rocks here. This is sacred to us. Long before we were human, we were salmon people. That's who we are as the Talela people. We are king salmon people. Salmon are very important to our culture. They're in our creation stories, they're in our songs. They feed our spirit. Our spirit craves that food. It's important to come out here and fish, to honor that gift. I hope that my grandkids and my great-grandson inherit water and the mountains, the ability to fish in this bay right here. If you don't have some place to live or can't find a connection to your land and your water, you're lost. The salmon are struggling. Our resident killer whales are crying out for us to do something. And that's unacceptable to myself, my grandchildren, my people. They depend on salmon. 
This river is, has changed dramatically. But as the settlers came in, they changed the landscape. They built homes. The farms started coming in. The fertile grounds that the farmers found, you know, were, were rich. But with the loss of the salmon, you know, you're losing that fertility. You're losing the connection to the river. The river isn't providing a service. We've got to find a way to survive together. How do we go from this point forward to make sure that we work together, that both the tribal and non-tribal society is viable? I know we as tribes, there was a time when we felt like we were faceless and sometimes hopeless. But we are not hopeless and we are not faceless. We want to be at the table. We want you to understand why this is so important for us to partner. We're stronger together than we are apart. Our culture means something. Extinction isn't an option for us. We have a lot of things in common with the agricultural folks. I hear what they're saying. They want a viable industry. They don't want to be pushed out. We want to be viable too. We want to be a sustainable culture. And we both have the same thing that we're trying to get to. We're just on the other side of the road. We've got to realize that we have a lot of common things together, that we can work together, that it makes those hard times a lot easier to work through. I'm hopeful that our kids pick up that spark and not only are experienced fishermen and, and successful and rich in the culture, but they also can look across and wave to the farmer and share our bounty with them. Because they're stewards of the land as well. That's why it's important for us to work and find um, a win-win for us all. Not for just for tribes, but for everyone in Washington State, so that we do have a whale to see. And we do have salmon to eat. And all the things we love. And really, the time is now. We can't wait. farmer it's not about making money it's it's more of a way of life just getting your hands in the soil it it, it does something to you if I could say what do you do for a living I'd say I was a land steward I get to just wake up and be outside it's deeply important to the Snohomish County community to have agriculture here. I think it's a big part of their identity. It's multi-beneficial. It not only is a place for the individual to, to raise their family, it adds to the community. It provides food and fiber. It's open space. This is some of the last remaining open space in the area. During these times of plenty, we just take it for granted that we can get all this food from Kansas or wherever else. There might come a time where, you know, we'll be, where's all the farmland? Well, all the houses are on it. There are many challenges facing us today. In this area here, some of them because of the encroachment by development. You know, some of them are weather related. With climate change, it's just 
as a farmer, it just throws in kind of one more variable. It's just one more thing to kind of like challenge the, the farmer, the average farmer that already is a very challenging, delicate profession. I would hope to continue to see farms and farmers in, in my area and in the Snohomish River Valley. And then I would hope to see more fish, more salmon runs. Yeah, I, I would love to see them both. As far as the loss of the fish, uh, some of it has been related to farming activities in the past. but we're finding out how we can improve our farming. And a lot of those things, we're overcoming them. Our industry and what we do is much more beneficial to the wildlife and the fish than the alternative out there. Well, I do believe salmon and agriculture can exist. It can exist because farmers need clean water, salmon need clean water, farmers need healthy land, and salmon need healthy land. It's all a mess because these two parties that should and do want the same thing have been pitted against each other as they don't, and that's just not true. need to figure out how we can obtain what we all want and be able to walk together and get there jointly instead of, well, I'm going to go this way. If you sit down and have dinner and good conversation with someone, you develop a little bit of a different rapport and you learn to respect where they're coming from and all of a sudden, hey, I can sit down and work with you <laughs> on the same page. But as, as long as we don't sit down, we're clueless. We, we think it's me against you. Everything's got to coexist. You got to look at the overall picture. And ag is part of that. To think we can't make a change for the better, that's just too big or complicated, it's just not true. We can make it better step by step together. Each person, each piece of this puzzle doing their part. We're done. We're done fighting. We don't need to fight over the last fish. We need to bring more fish back. But we're not going to get there if we aren't working together completely. Sometimes we have to give up a little bit and gain a little bit. We all can't have exactly what we want, and that's good, because sometimes what we think we want really isn't the best thing. We've got to find a way. If we're all going to survive, we, we all have to find a way to make it work for all of us. We're at a place now where people have put down their old burdens so that they can work together. so that we can forge a new path. That burden is the assumption of what the other person is. It's the assumption of what the other side is trying to do to you. And when you let that burden down and you see that you're actually in it together, in that is enormous power.